Welcome back, Seth Bling here. And many of you may not know this, but I've actually been a pretty avid Magic player for many years. In fact, in college, I was president of the Magic Club, so I got a little bit of Magic cred. Uh, what I want to show you today is a set of 45 cards that I designed about two years ago. Uh, the idea was that we had eight people, everybody designed 45 cards, and then we would kind of shuffle all those cards together and then draft them so everybody would come up with a deck um, using the normal drafting procedure. And so everybody, all every basically each of the eight people designed their own 45 cards. And each person chose a different video game. And I chose, of course, Minecraft. So today I want to show you the 45 cards that I designed. And I'll tell you a little bit about them. And uh, so this was the first one. I spoiled this on Twitter. The other day and uh, and asked if people wanted to see more and they did so i'll start with this one and then we'll just go through them in order um, so i guess it'll be sorted by color and so basically the goal with all these cards was to have them be playable alongside other people's cards in an actual draft format so i wanted them to be somewhat balanced i knew that there was going to be one of each of these cards in the card pool and so the rarity might not really matter because well there's just one of every card so um Actually, one cool thing about this is I used Magic Set Editor here uh, to design all these cards. The default kind of symbol for Magic Set Editor is just a square, and I just kept that because that makes sense for Minecraft. Okay, anyway, let me start talking about these cards. Enderman is the first card here. Uh, so it's a uh, 2-2 two, two for 3. You can pay 1 and a blue to make it unblockable until end of turn. Uh, so this is sort of sp supposed to mimic the Enderman's teleportation ca capability. He can just teleport past any enemies that would block him. And then he's got a second ability, which is blue and tap, gain control of target land until end of turn. Uh, and so this is supposed to mimic the fact that the Enderman can pick up blocks. And so this ability is not maybe useful in the way that you'd think. I can actually highlight this, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, because when you use this ability, basically your opponent can just tap the land in response. So you don't actually really get to use the land when you take in control of it. But there's a couple ways to use this. One is that you can actually uh, gain control of the land during your opponent's upkeep. And they can tap it, but they won't be able to use it to cast most of their spells, only like instant spells. So if they, if they wanted to use that land to cast like a creature or something, uh, it, and you took the land during their upkeep, you wouldn't be able, they wouldn't be able to... Um, to use that mana so uh it's got a couple of use and then you could also maybe like take the land and then find a way to sacrifice it if you had a sacrifice outlet so uh so that's kind of an example in fact let me just go to the villager next instead of going straight up to the top because um, this actually works really well with the enderman so you gain control of target land until end of turn let's look at villager so villager is a zero four for four um, it doesn't attack so that's why it's got zero power uh the creature type is testificate uh, those of you who were around when villagers were first added to the game will know that they were originally called testificates. Uh, when villager enters the battlefield, exile the top three cards of your library. Okay, so that doesn't really do much on its own, but you tap and sacrifice a land. So tap villager and sacrifice a land to put put a card exiled by villager into your hand and exile the top card of your library. So this what this does is it's like when you when he enters the battlefield, you get three cards from your top of your library. That's like the stock of the villagers' inventory, kind of. And so you can sacrifice lands, so you trade in lands to buy those cards. And so you get a card into your hand from those from that set of three, and then you exile a new card from the top, top of your library, and it basically goes into the villagers' store stock. So kind of a neat, neat way to have like a... Um, you have like a trade system, but also as you use the trades, you get you unlock more trades, which is also kind of flavorful for the villager. I, I'm pretty happy with this card. Uh, yeah, so let me go just go back to the top, and we'll start from the from the beginning. Okay, so chicken. This guy's a one one for one, pretty vanilla guy. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, roll a six sided die. If it lands on a six, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of a chicken. So what's kind of cool about this is. It's like the chicken's laying an, egg, laying an egg, and you're throwing the egg every time. And, like, it's one in eight, I guess, to get a baby chicken this way. But um, I just use a six-sided die to mimic that. So it kind of mimics that aspect. But also, much like in a chicken breeder, it starts off really slow, but it is there is an exponential growth. As you get more chickens, your rate of you know new chicken births 
goes up. So over a very long period of time, this will, uh, this will actually become a lot of chickens. But <laughs> honestly, it's, I mean, not, it's not a very good card, but it's got some flavor to it. Okay, here's Iron Golem. It's a 2-6 for 4 and a white. So it's a pretty defensive creature, much like the actual Iron Golem in the game. Whenever Iron Golem blocks or is blocked by a creature, tap that creature. The creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So it's kind of like you're throwing the creature up into the air and uh, and it's kind of disabled during that time. Actually, the original, uh, the original version of the card that I designed here, it actually gave the creature, whenever it blocked a creature or whatever, it gave the creature flying <laughs> until end of turn and also did something, I don't remember what. Maybe it damaged it. Anyway, I think it maybe had this effect still, but it just also gave it flying. But... Uh, uh, after the review process, the flying was taken away. I still think it was flavorful. I maybe should add it back in, but this is the set of cards as it was when I uh, when I designed it for the original uh, Build Your Own Draft. It was called a Build Your Own Draft, by the way, the, the event. Okay, so the next up, we have Mob Trap. It's an enchantment for a single white mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a loot counter on Mob Trap. Remove a loot counter from Mob Trap. Prevent the next one damage that we built be dealt to target creature or player. So it's supposed to be like every you know now and then you get a mob to spawn and then you trap it and you get an item and you can use those items for some effect. Prevent next one damage so it will be, be dealt to target creature or player. Uh, isn't really that flavorful for the like actual things that a mob trap can drop, but anyway, Mushroom. It's uh, zero two for two and white. Tap you gain two life. So this is supposed to be like you can uh, basically it's an infinite source of mushroom stew, right? So mushroom stew is kind of life giving, and that's where that's where this comes from. Okay, ocelot. Uh, ocelot enters the battlefield tapped. It's a zero four creatures your opponents control with power one or less cannot attack. So uh, the entering the battlefield tapped is uh, sort of supposed to mimic the fact that you have to tame the ocelot. And when we get to the wolf, the tamed wolf is coming up soon. You'll see it has the same thing because it takes time to tame the wolf. But then once you have it, you can use it. Creatures your opponents control with power one or less cannot attack. It's supposed to get creepers, which if you look ahead, uh, these both of these creepers have zero power. So it's kind of like they scare off the zero power guys. And zero four because it can't, like ocelots don't attack. They don't deal damage. Saddled Pig uh, is just a white guy for one, uh, a one one white guy for one. But you can it has an ability. You can pay white and tap it to give target creature plus one plus one until end of turn. Okay, so this is where achievements start to come in. If that creature has flying, you gain an achievement named When Pigs Fly with four, target creature gains flying until end of turn. So uh, an achievement is uh, something we came up with as a group for this build your own draft. And uh, achievements are a type of emblem. And so you can get an emblem. It's not a card. It's just like a fake object that has some writing on it. And so the writing on the emblem that you get here, the achievement, is uh, this activated ability that gives creatures flying. And so basically, if if you use this ability on a creature with flying, then you can pay for to give any other creature flying for the rest of the game. And yeah, so that's pretty much how that works. Um, all of the all of the achievements just have activated abilities. They don't give any passive effects or triggered abilities or anything like that. They're all activated abilities, so it doesn't really matter if you have multiple copies of them. Although we, I think we like said there was a rule where you couldn't have more than one copy of any given achievement. Okay, so Splash Ho Potion of Healing is the next card. It's a straightforward one. Uh, it's an instant. Prevent the next three damage that would be dealt, be dealt to target creature or player. You gain three life. So it splashes on both the you know. Uh, creature or player that you're targeting, and also it hits you as well, so you gain three life. Um, Tamed Wolf is next, and like I said, uh, you have to tame it, so it takes a little bit of time, so it enters the battlefield tapped. But it's got pretty good stats. 3-1 for one and a white is uh, it's pretty decent. It's one toughness because wolves are notoriously fragile. They fall off cliffs and whatever, take a lot of damage, so... Um, yep. Okay, Crafting Bench. Uh, this is a very crucial item to Minecraft. So this is an artifact, of course. It's a blue artifact, though, so it costs one and a blue. Uh, so the ability that it has is two and a blue and tap. You can put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. So no matter how much that artifact costs, you can play it from your hand for this cost. So it's like uh, you're using your mana to craft, uh, craft an item. But there's a, an achievement that you get here. So if you control four or more artifacts, then you get an achievement called benchmarking. And that lets you reveal the top card of your library for one mana, and if it's an artifact, you put it into your hand. 
So uh, this is designed for like a really heavy artifact deck, which is, you know, the crafting bench is all about things that you construct. So it's all about artifacts. So that's that one. Okay, Ender Pearl is a really simple instant. Target creature is unblockable and gains Shroud until end of turn. So you can kind of use this to get a creature through, or you could use it to keep one of your guys alive when your opponent tries to kill it with uh, some sort of spell. Okay, Enderman we already did. Infinite Water Source. I like this one. So it costs blue blue, and that's because you need two water buckets of water to make an infinite water source. So really flavorful. Same thing with the cost to activate it. Blue blue tap. Uh, so it's unusual to tap enchantments, but this one has a tap effect. Search your library for an island card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. So of course, an infinite water source lets you get as many buckets of water as you want. So you get as many islands as you want. So I, I like this one from, from a flavor perspective. I think I, I kind of hit it on hit the nail on the head with this one. Potion of Invisibility. Uh, it's an instant counter-target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability that has one or more targets. So the idea is you see a spell tar like coming at you or at some creature or something and you can make it invisible and the spell doesn't, you know, can't see the creature anymore. By the way, a lot of this art I just got off the internet. <laughs> so uh, it's all labeled where I got it from pretty much. I think some of them might not be labeled, but yeah. Okay, so Redstone Computer is a blue card, of course. Because blue is the color of intelligence and engineering. So at the beginning of your upkeep, put a computation counter on redstone computer, and you can remove three computation counters to draw three cards. So it basically takes time for the redstone computer to compute things, because they're really slow. But once you do compute something, you get the payoff. You get to draw some cards. You get knowledge. So there you go. It's redstone computer. Here's snow golem. Um, it's an artifact because you have to craft it out of snow in a pumpkin head. Um, and this, uh, so this is sort of supposed to mimic the fact that a, a snow golem throws, uh, throws snowballs at his target and kind of incapacitates it. So you, you keep throwing snowballs to tap target creatures, kind of the way it works. Uh, whenever a player casts a red spell, sacrifice snow golem. Uh, that's because if a snow golem is in a desert uh, biome, then, or if it gets lit on fire, it dies really fast. So it's supposed to be like, uh, it, can, it can die really fast from that stuff. And it's only got one toughness anyway. They're really fragile. Okay, Cave Spider's next. Uh, this is really simple. It's just a really fast creature that has Wither because, you know, it kind of poisons you. So Wither means it deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one, minus one counters. And there is actually <laughs> uh, a Wither creature we'll get to later on because, of course, Withers in Minecraft. But yeah, this is just pretty straightforward. Cubular Zombie is just a 2-2 two, two for two. Uh... Zombies are so vanilla that I thought it made sense for it to just be a vanilla creature. Uh, I called it Cubular Zombie because there's already zombie tokens in my, in uh, Magic, and they have the name Zombie, so I didn't want it to conflict rules-wise with existing cards. Okay, Ender Dragon. This guy is a big flying guy. Um, it's a 5-5 five, five for 6. Flying. Whenever Ender Dragon deals combat damage to a player, that player sacrifices two lands. So it's like whenever the dragon swoops in and attacks... It always like busts up all the blocks that are around you, and so that's what it, that's supposed to mimic. And it's mythic rare, so <laughs> I don't know. The, again, the rarity doesn't really matter. I, I was not very diligent with the rarity. All right, uh, Ghast. So this guy is a uh, one-three flyer with Wither. Uh, so again, it it sort of uh, deals. Uh, I guess I don't know why I did Wither on this one because it just deals normal damage to you. It's not like it poisons you. But I thought it made sense. Uh, but I guess you're in the nether, so things are harsher in the nether. Whenever there are three, at least three minus one, minus one counters on creatures opponents control, if you don't control an emblem named into the nether, you gain an achievement named into the nether. Uh, with tap two untapped creatures you control, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. So, okay. What that means is if you are able to like block three times with this ghast and uh, leave counters on your opponent's creatures... Um, you get this achievement that lets you put even more counters on opponent's creatures. It's actually a pretty powerful achievement, but it's not that easy to get. You kind of probably want some something else that's able to put counters on uh, opponent's creatures. Skeletal Dungeon. So this is supposed to be a, just a dungeon, but it's specifically for your skeletons. Whenever one or more creatures attack you, 
put a 1-1 black skeleton creature token with first strike onto the battlefield. Okay, so this is supposed to be like the fact that uh, dungeon spawners don't spawn anything unless there's a player nearby. So unless your opponent actually comes in and attacks, it's not doing anything. But whenever they do attack, you get this first strike guy. Um, and of course, they have first strike because they have a bow, so they can shoot you at a distance. Um, and then these, these actually... Um, stack together pretty well you know if you uh start to get multiple of these you can block like a, a creature with a higher power and toughness with several skeletons be able to kill it before it actually deals any damage so this is a pretty cool card and i reuse these uh skeleton like skeleton first strike creatures um actually in spider jockey i reused them okay so spider jockey is supposed to be a skeleton riding a spider like in the game so it's a one two double strike swamp walk i really like this card uh, when Spider Jockey dies, choose one. Put a 1-1 black spider creature with Swamp Walk onto the battlefield, or put a 1-1 black skeleton creature with First Strike onto the battlefield. Okay, so let's go over this, because this is really... this. I think I really like this. So the idea is when he dies, you get to either choose the spider or the skeleton to live. So it's the first time that they actually kill him, It's they've just killed one of the two components. Um, and so... Uh, so you either get the 1-1 Spider with Swamp Walk, notice that this guy has Swamp Walk, or you get a 1-1 Skeleton with First Strike. So this guy has Double Strike, which, if you're not familiar, means it deals regular damage and First Strike damage. So, in its vanilla form, in its base form, it's dealing the First Strike damage from the Skeleton and the regular damage from the Spider. Of course, since the Spider's on the bottom, it still has Swamp Walk. So it's, it's like you're splitting it up into two creatures, each with their own ability, and when it dies, you get one of those two creatures. I really, really like this. I, I think this turned out really well. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to gl gloat a little bit more. Okay, anyway. Uh, moving on. Splash Potion of Harming puts three minus one minus one counters on target creature. This could actually be pretty good with the Ghast that we saw earlier. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, wither. Okay, so this guy obviously has Wither. It's got flying in first strike too. He's got a he's a two seven for five, so a big butt. Um, hard to kill because he has so much life. Uh, it's kind of like the actual wither, and then first strike because he shoots out projectiles, flying obviously, and then wither because he's got that wither effect. Actually, the wither effect in Minecraft is, uh, I think, a pretty cool mirror for the wither effect in uh, in uh, Magic. So anyway, that's pretty straightforward. Again, <laughs> it's a common. I don't think it belongs as an actual common, but. Whatever. Okay, so Creeper is a 0 2 for 4. Whenever Creeper blocks or is blocked by a creature, sacrifice Creeper. If you do, it uh, Creeper deals 5 damage to that creature, and that creature's controller sacrifices a land. So it's basically as soon as the Creeper gets close enough to actually fight another creature, you know, does its and explodes. Um, and uh, so it deals 5 damage to the creature because it's exploded all over that creature, and also destroys a land as sort of a. Uh, um, a, you know, part of its explosion effect. The creature's controller chooses which land, so... Anyway, yeah, so it's basically like an explosion. It's got zero power because it doesn't have any direct attack, but obviously it deals five damage if it actually does, um, you know, get into combat. And you can kill it, um, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Lightning Creeper is a bigger form of Creeper. It's a zero four, a little harder to kill, which actually doesn't really match the game, because they would... In the, in the game, they both have the same no, number of hit points. Actually, Lightning Creeper is easier to kill because it's been struck by Lightning. Anyway, when Lightning Creeper blocks or is blocked by a creature, sacrifice Lightning Creeper. If you do, destroy all lands, and Lightning Creeper deals 5 damage to each creature. Creeper. Creature. Creature. So this is sort of, uh, this is just a bigger effect, right? Same trigger when it gets close to a, a, another enemy. Um, it, it explodes, but this one destroys all lands and deals five damage to each creature, probably killing every creature. So it just, like, kind of wrecks the entire game. It's a really big effect. Uh, yeah. Okay, Magma Cube. The 2-2 two -two attacks each turn of Fable for three mana. Uh, when it dies, you put two 1-1 one -one red elemental creature tokens with this creature attacks each turn of Fable on the battlefield. So you get two smaller copies of the Magma Cube, which I think makes sense. Netherblaze is a flyer for four. It's got uh, it's a two two. Uh, you can tap to deal one damage to target creature. That creature can't block this turn. So it's uh, it's like it shoots fireballs at creatures and sort of occupies them with the fact that they're on fire. And so they're too busy putting themselves out to try and block. Um, yeah, so pretty decent creature. T TNT cannons 
also one of my favorites. So this is a sorcery that deals 4 damage or 3 mana, which is pretty efficient in terms of um, direct damage spells. If you don't con control an island, TNT cannon deals 3 damage to you. So this is supposed to mimic the fact that you need water in a water cannon. And if you don't have the water in the water cannon, it, you know, it still shoots the cannon off, but it's also going to blow up in your face. <laughs> so I, I like this one. Okay, Villager we already saw. Zombie Pigman is a 3 2 for 2 with Defender. Whenever you're, you're dealt damage, Zombie Pigman loses Defender and gains. Zombie Pigman attacks each turn of Fable. And that effect doesn't end at the end of the turn. So it's, that's permanent. So it's basically um, if, if somebody, if, they, if your opponent is able to deal damage to you, it angers the Zombie Pigman and they start attacking, you know, without reserve. They just go full out, right? So they stop being kind of a. a blocker and start being an attacker but it's very efficient for the mana three two for two so it's a i think it's a decent creature okay jungle biome is <laughs> i really hate jungle biomes so this is supposed to mimic that it's just how hard it is to get through them so non-green creatures don't untap during their controllers untap steps at the beginning of each player's upkeep that player may choose any number of tapped non-green creatures he or she controls and pay one for each creature chosen this way if the player does untap those creatures. So basically, your non green you have to pay one to untap non green creatures. And so the idea is green creatures are things like ocelots and whatever. They're, well, actually, ocelots aren't green in this. Anyway, but <laughs> the point is that green creatures are kind of good at going through the jungle because um, that's where they live, a lot of them. And so um, so they're, they're good at going through the jungle. Everyone, everyone else has to pay these costs to you know, make, do anything. Anyway. Uh, okay, Mitotic Slime is actually an existing card, uh, but it's the flavor of uh, this is so this I this is actually just a reprint of the existing Mitotic Slime. Um, so you could look this up on Magic the Gathering, you know their their website, and you would see the same text. Uh, but basically, it's it splits into two one one or two, sorry, it's when it dies, it splits into two two twos, and then when th each of those die, they split into two one ones, and uh, so I, it just mimics the the exact like. Uh, thing that slimes in Minecraft do, so I thought I would just reprint the card in my set, which is something that Wizards of the Coast does all the time when they're making new sets. They reprint cards, but they have new flavor in the new set. Potion of Regeneration is <laughs> pretty pretty simple. It regenerate target creature. Uh, it's cost a single green mod. It's got a rebound, so uh, if you cast this spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So you can use it to save a creature that's about to die this turn, and the next turn you can kind of give it a regeneration shield so that if it attacks or whatever, it's not going to die in combat. Um, so it kind of has a lasting effect, which is cool. And then similar with Potion of Strength, also has a rebound here. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until the end of the turn. Pretty straightforward. Um, this The rebound effect is probably a little bit better here, because this is kind of a more aggressive card. Punch a tree. It's a sorcery. It's supposed to be like a rampant growth effect. Um, as additional cost to cast, punch a tree, sacrifice a forest. So you have to punch a, you know, punch a tree in order to make this work. Search your library for up to two lands. Put one onto the battlefield tapped and one into your hand. Then shuffle your library. So that's supposed to be sort of like you get the wood from the, um, from the tree, but also you get saplings and you can plant them. So that's the one that goes in your hand. I don't know. Maybe that's the flavor. Anyway, that's what the card does. <laughs> uh, if you control six or more lands, you gain an achievement named Punching Trees with one, sacrifice a land, draw a card. So this is only when you cast a spell that you get this effect. So one of the problems with cards like this, nor if you know, ignoring the last paragraph, is that you draw a late game and you really don't need any more lands and it doesn't really do anything. So th in this one, if you do draw a late game when you already have a bunch of lands, it lets you use those lands to draw more cards which is probably something you want to do. So it's got kind of an additional effect there. Um, yeah, I think this is a pretty decent card, like power level wise. Okay, Sapling is a zero one creature with fading one. When it when Sapling dies, you may search your library for, for a forest card and put it on the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. So it's like a creature that takes two turns to turn into a tree, uh, but you can also use it to block and uh, and you still get the tree, which doesn't really make any sense flavor-wise, but oh well. It was two years ago. Uh, maybe I should rethink some of these cards, but the fading part at least makes sense. Silverfish is a 1-2 for, for 2. It doesn't really deal much damage, 
But uh, whenever Silverfish is dealt damage, you may pay one in a green. If you do, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of Silverfish. So whenever you attack a Silverfish, sometimes it'll awaken, uh, you know, other copies, other Silverfish, basically, from, from the stone that they're inhabiting or whatever. And uh, it's got two toughness so that it can take one damage and still survive. And so if you can find a way to get this into combat or to deal one damage to it yourself, then uh, then you can get a lot of silverfish out and it could overwhelm your opponent, which is kind of cool. At the very least, it kind of regenerates for one in a green. Cobblestone generator. I like this one a lot too. So cobblestone generator takes a lava and, an, and a water, so the cost is red-blue. At the beginning of your upkeep, flip a coin. If you win the flip, draw a card. So that's supposed to mimic the fact that when you use a pickaxe on the lava or on the cobblestone, half the time the cobblestone ends up just falling into the lava. But if it doesn't, then you get the cobblestone. So um, obviously drawing a card is much better than getting a cobblestone, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of like on average, you get half a card a turn out of this, which is pretty good, especially because it only costs two. Diamond Sword, so we're on to the artifacts. We're almost done, I guess. Only six more cards left. Uh, seven more cards left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so this is a sword that you could equip. Gives an enchanted creature plus four, plus zero. Oh. At the beginning of the end step, if equipped creature has dealt eight damage this turn, you gain an achievement with uh, named Overkill with two target creature gets plus one, plus zero oh until end of turn. So Overkill is an achievement you get if you deal eight hearts of damage... Um, with a single attack. So that's a really good mimic of that achievement. And then um, the effect is basically more power for the creatures you control, even if Diamond Sword goes away or whatever. Okay, so Dispenser is a free artifact. It doesn't cost anything to place, to, you know, play from your hand. Um, exile a card. Well, you can pay one to exile a card from your hand or to put a card from the Dispenser into your hand. So it's sort of something you can put stuff into and it'll spit it back out if you power it. Um, but you can also pay two and tap it to put a land card exiled by dispenser onto the battlefield tapped. So you can like dispense a bucket of water or whatever. So that's dispenser. Fishing rod goes an artifact for two. You can pay one and tap it and target creature attacks this turn if able. So it's like you're casting your fishing rod, you hooked a zombie and you're pulling it towards you, right? And then it's going to fight you. I see. It's actually a pretty good effect being able to do that. Um, and then you can pay four and tap to, uh, at the beginning of your next end step, put a 0-1 blue fish creature token onto the battlefield with sacrifice this creature, you gain two life. So you, you can pay for to go fishing and you get a fish uh, at the beginning of the next end step, so you don't get it immediately. Um, but you get the fish and then uh, and you can sacrifice it. You can basically eat it to gain life. Kind of like eating the uh, mushroom stew with the mushroom. Okay, minecart rail is another free artifact. Um, so it's got fortify, which was an effect... I guess that was only seen in Future Sight, in the set Future Sight, and they didn't really use it very much. But uh, Fortify basically lets you pay some mana to equip the fortification to a land. So it's like an equipment, but for lands. So the ability is tap fortified land, target creature gains haste until end of turn. Uh, if this is the second time you've used, uh, sorry, if this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, you gain an achievement named On a Rail with three untapped target creature. So it's sort of like if you have a big rail network and you have lots of rails because you equipped, uh, you fortified two lands or whatever and used the ability, um, then you get the on a rail achievement, which uh, lets you untap target creature. Basically it means you have a big rail network, so creatures are more available. They can go where they need to go. Uh, that's kind of the flavor anyway. So the, the basic ability of this isn't that good, but I think the achievement is quite good getting that uh, ability to untap creatures for three mana. Okay, Sticky Piston. I like this one a lot. It's kind of useless, but it might combo with some other things. Um, so it casts, it costs two um, to target opponent gains control. Uh, you can tap it to have target opponent gain control of another permanent you control as long as Sticky Piston remains tapped. You can pay three to untap, untap Sticky Piston. So mostly it's pretty useless. Uh, you can give your opponent a thing um, during your upkeep, of course, Sticky Piston is going to become untapped, so you're going to get the, the permanent back. Um, but if you have a permanent that has a negative effect, you can give your opponent that negative effect. Also, um, you can actually use this to give a creature vigilance or untap a creature during your opponent's turn. And the way you do that is on your turn, you tap Sticky Piston 
to give your tapped creature to an opponent. Or not even a creature, it could be a land or whatever. Well, probably, anyway. So you, you tap Sticky Piston to give your tapped creature to an opponent. Let them untap it during their untap step. And then you pay three to untap Sticky Piston and get the creature back. So you sort of use their untap step to untap a creature. So you can actually use this in kind of a sneaky way to, to give a creature, to untap a creature. Which is not necessarily obvious from looking at this. Okay, so then there's two more cards. They're lands. Uh, this is the end. You cannot play the end if you have 10 or more life. So it's, you can't play it during the early game. It has to be during the end game, which makes sense, right? With Because that's the flavor of the end. You tap to add two mana to your mana pool, and it's colorless mana, which I think makes sense. The end is a very andro androgynous place. It doesn't really have like color to it. Um, but it does, it does have powerful stuff, right? Uh, whenever a creature an opponent controls the power five or greater dies, you get an emblem named the end with four, draw a card. So this is supposed to basically be like, uh, you've killed the ender dragon, right? You've killed the dragon that your opponent controls. And in fact, if we go look at the ender dragon, it's got five power. So if your opponent actually controls the card ender dragon, whoops, uh, uh, then you can kill it to basically beat the end, in which case, uh, you get this achievement, and the achievement's supposed to mimic the fact that you can build really efficient experience farms in the end. So you can you know, build Enderman farms and basically spend some time um, to get levels, and so it's that's sort of what this... Once you've defeated the dragon, you can get this sort of extra effect, which is pretty cool. And the last card in the set is Ocean Biome, um, which is an island. It's actually an island type, but it does enter the battlefield tapped. Uh, and you can tap it for mana. Um, you can also tap and sacrifice it to put two zero one blue squid creature tokens onto the battlefield. So that's an island that's got kind of an extra effect, but it enters the battlefield tapped. So those are all the cards. Uh, again, this, these were intended to be played alongside other people's cards. I do actually have all of the achievements. And um, so yeah, you can see this is what the achievement looks like. Uh, it's an emblem. Um, but these are all the things that I went over. This is, you know, the Enderman. <laughs> so yeah, I guess there's some extra flavor here, right? So benchmarking uh, is like, uh, you've got this diamond pickaxe, so you've done a lot of crafting. The end uh, is uh, an Enderman farm. Into the nether is um, just like, you've got ghasts everywhere. On a rail, okay, I, I that's not really... I guess it's uh, it's got this, I don't know, rail system. Overkill. Diamond Sword. This is actually from an animation. Uh, I don't remember which animation, but it's a very popular image on the internet. Uh, punching trees. You've got this tree farm set up so you can just quickly chop through them. <laughs> okay. I don't know where I found this one. I guess it's from Banana Burger. User Banana Burger on the internet. Uh, and then, you know, this is like you've gotten a fish through the fishing rod. Squid. Straightforward. Skeleton. Spider. Uh, this is the uh, this is the magma cube token that you get when the original magma cube dies, and then same. There's the uh, uh, there's the medium and small sized slimes, and they each have their. So yeah, I did all of the uh, the effects too, and and so we printed these out so that if people got the original card, they would have tokens and and achievements to play with and stuff. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I uh, like I said, I've been into Magic for quite a while. I really actually like designing cards. I also designed a set a while back of um, Mario-themed cards, but I lost a lot of them. I might still have some of them sitting around somewhere. Um, but I really like... It's really fun to design Magic cards based on a video game. If you haven't tried it, I, I recommend downloading Magic Editor and try, just trying it out for yourself, because it's it's actually really fun if you, if you like Magic. Um, yeah, so anyway, thought I'd share with you guys... Uh, I did, I did have a lot of fun designing these cards. Again, it was two years ago that I designed them, so that's might be why I was stumbling over them a little bit as I went through them. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. That's about it. Thanks for watching.